All right, what's going on, guys? So I'm back at the S2000, and um, I do apologize that it's taken so long to get a video. I was having a bunch of trouble with my last the screen cap screen capture software I was trying to use. It was like a multifunction has like you can do the picture in picture, which is what I have in the bottom corner. Is like I guess it's on this side. You have like a little picture in picture of me, um, and it's overlaid on that. So it has that, and also has a screen capture. Um, option, but it was there's so many bugs. Just something with the audio not working right. Something with the video not working, or the screen capture part just, you know, going faster than normal, um, and the audio is normal. It's just, uh, it was it was frustrating. So I've got this. This seems to be pretty good. But anyway, that aside, that's, the video is not about that. Obviously, you didn't click on the video to watch me talk about bad screen capture software. Um, the purpose of this video, I'm going to go through everything that I had to do to get this car running. Now, this is a 2001 S2000, which is an AP1 S2000. Um, backstory on it, I bought it from my friend. Um, you can look at the other videos that I've put up on it when I talked more about what all's done to the car. But the basics of it, um, I bought it from my friend. While he had it, uh, it was stolen. A bunch of stuff was stolen out of it to include the engine management, all the gauges. Um, just, just a bunch of stuff was stolen out of it. So... Um, he had it, it was recovered and he didn't have the money to get it going so I bought it from him to get it going again replaced everything and that's where I'm at now I've got a basic street tune on it now the difference between a street tune and a dyno tune some guys completely refuse to do anything street tuning but if you do it safe if you know and you, it's still a little bit of a risk but um, you can still put a street tune on a car and uh, I wouldn't drive it around forever but you can drive it around if you have to. Not that I would recommend it at all, um, but you can drive it around if you have to. Um, and depending on how good the street tune is, you can actually drive it around for a little while. The biggest thing that you that is the issue with street tuning is you can't put an accurate timing map on um, on a car by doing a street tune. So I'm going to talk about. I'm going to touch on that a little bit, but it's, I, I can't do it um, with the car like as it is right now so uh, anyway so the reason for this video is that you can't just take a uh, like if you, I, mean, I don't know if people are out there thinking this but if you buy an engine management for your car you can't just take it like say I have a, a Haltech um, EMS which that's plug-and-play you plug it into the factory system now you can't just take it and plug it in and expect everything to work it will work considering nothing else is done to the engine. You can drive it around. You can plug it in like that. You can drive it around and you can keep it in your car until you until you do upgrades and change out, you know, put a turbo in or fuel injectors or start changing out sensors to like higher, um, like, you know, bigger map sensor, things like that. Um, so you can't just plug it in and expect it to work. It's not like the USB thing in the computer, like you get a new mouse and you plug it in and hey, we recognize that you plugged in a new device, you know, and then they find the driver for it, and you know, then it works magically. Or a printer, you know, you plug in. I think you still need to do CDs with, print, but you get my, you get my, uh, you get what I'm saying though. You can't just plug stuff in and expect it to work. Now, um, this is where tuners come in. So, you would hire a, a tuner, somebody that you would trust or you know, recommended from friends or whatever. Uh, you would hire a tuner and they would go in and they would do the stuff that I'm going to show you how to do today with the exception of putting a dyno tune on it. Now I'm not, I, I do have a slot <clears throat> for getting this car or for dynoing this car and, and putting a good dyno tune on it but considering I have to pay pretty good bit amount per hour I am not going to be running a video <clears throat> while I'm dynoing it so um, it's like 75 bucks an hour and I, I've slotted in for three hours for um, for tuning the car, so should take about two hours, but it's good to have another little hour. Um, anyway, um, so first things first, sensors. So you th you're thinking like, okay, well I I've, I've had my I'm just gonna throw out like a scenario like I've had my Haltech EMS plugged into my car. I I bought it. I plugged it in. It's had the, had the the Haltex map on it that would control my stock engine, and I've been running that around great. But now I've gotten five thousand dollars, and I bought this whole kit with fuel injectors and turbocharger and upgraded map sensor, um, wastegate, 
and like aftermarket wastegate, all that stuff, and those are all things that are in this car right now, which is why I'm using them in the scenario. It's a scenario that makes sense, even though I didn't put the stuff in, somebody else did. Um, so you have that stuff in your car and you want to configure it. Uh, like I said, you can't just plug it in and expect it to work. Um, it will work to a certain extent, but it won't work right. So for example, like with a map sensor, so uh, if I go up here to set up and main setup, actually, you know what, first up, uh, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Um, this ECU manager software, just to, to get it working, to install it and get it working right, uh, install it from the CD, um, go up here to options, communications, and I'm going to go back to this this little section because I don't have to talk about that in a bit. Um, communication port. Um, I selected the one that I have highlighted. If you have more than one that pop up, then you can put it on auto and it should automatically detect which one the, the engine management, which USB the engine management's on. And um, make sure the car is, because the, the key has to be turned on in order for it to um, talk to the engine management. So right now, I'm look, we're looking at the configuration stuff that's on the computer because I have the cable plugged in. Um, so you want to have the right COM port, click OK. You should be able just to go up here and, pre and connect and press this uh, connect disconnect button, and then it connects and it works. Um, if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't work right for you, um, if you can't get it to connect, then uh, close out this software, uh, this Haltech EMS software, and then open it back up. Power cycle the um, the car's computer, which is pretty much like you know turn off the key and turn the key back on, ignition on. Um, you don't want to turn it on until you at least get the sensors configured to where where they need to be. So the sensor that's been upgraded on this, the first one that I'm going to talk about, is the MAP sensor, which it stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. Now the MAP sensor, it determines the, the uh, absolute pressure, or pressure for all intents and purposes pretty much. The, um, it, it measures the pressure that is inside your intake manifold. So on the stock version of this car, it had a map sensor that went up to 70 kPa, I believe. kPa is kilopascals. That's um, that's one unit of measurement. You can actually go over here to options and change it to change the units. Uh, where is it at? Pressure. So it was is it? It was kPa. You can put it in bar, um, but I have it in, in psi. INHG is uh, inches mercury. Um, but I have it in PSI, so uh, fuel volume liters, you don't really have to change the stuff, distance, kilometers, air fuel ratios, AFR, um, voltages and volts, temperature I changed over to Fahrenheit, so you can change colors and stuff too if you want, I guess, is that what this is for? Magnitude, shape. anyway, anyway, this not a so that's all that's in the options tab. So you don't you don't configure the actual sensors in the options tab. You just you, you would want to use the. I'm saying that as, the, as something that I can point back to in a second because we're gonna need to. I don't want to go back and open it up again. So just keep that in mind that I just showed. So you click setup tab and open it whenever it pops up. So first things first. Um, where's it at? So, uh, set up. 